low quality fans and a high quality Bruins team that is a dub, dub 63, a record breaking, history changing dub. That wasn't as boisterous and crazy as usual. There's no skit. There's nothing going on because I just got back to South Carolina. I've got an early day tomorrow. It's about 10 p.m. Uh, on Monday night. Obviously, we have the game tomorrow, which will be back to regularly scheduled skits and fun and all sorts of full breakdowns. But again, just like the last video in the hotel room, I just wanted to chat just a little bit, just a little bit about a couple things. 63 wins. The question has to be asked. Are the 2022-2023 Boston Bruins the greatest regular season of all time? No. They aren't. And that's okay. If you look at the entire history of the NHL, the 77 Habs, along with a couple other teams potentially, that's the greatest regular season team of all time. And I don't think you can take that away from them. When you go look at what they did to the league at that time, a much smaller league, a much different league, no salary cap, they had ties. We're going to hear all the reasons why Boston is not the best team of all time. Now, of course, best team of all time isn't even on the board until, God please, they win the cup. Oh, I hope they win the cup. Anyway, but... You cannot have the conversation about them being the best regular season team when that 77 Habs team exists. And there'll probably be an argument about a couple of the teams that follow them. Uh, but there's a graphic that really stuck out to me because this is an argument I kind of wanted to make because everyone was going to poke holes in this. First of all, this is beyond impressive. This is... When, when Tampa tied it in 2019, 62 wins, I was flabbergasted. I was shocked. It didn't make any sense. I could not believe it that they were able to put that together it was incredible and for the fact that someone was able to beat it well, we might not see this happen again in our lifetime because the parody era is what it is we have more competitive teams go look at and this isn't taken away from that 77 Habs team but go look at some of the results that team on ice unbelievable Greatest regular season, greatest team, full stop of all time. The Bruins don't make that great. But this graphic here from Dre Jay Fresh on Twitter shows the goals percentage, right? So how many goals in every, throughout the season has your team scored versus allowed? And there we are at number seven. And you'll see all the way up at number one is that 77 Habs team who had a 200, over 200 goal differential, positive. Just unbelievable stuff. But I liked what he said about this, Jay Fresh, saying, when you start to talk about the most impressive team, given the circumstances, the most impressive regular season team of all time. I mean, Boston is right there. You might still not give it to them. But that conversation is had. And to even say that out loud is so unbelievable. Everyone, we are living in a world now where it's all or nothing. You're either number one or you're not. And there's no room for any conversation, anything. Every time you try to have a conversation about this, it, the last four weeks, anytime I've brought up any player on Twitter, other than Connor McDavid, Oilers fans are talking to me about, well, Connor McDavid. Like, fuck, can we just talk about someone else for a second? There's other good players in the league. We live in that world right now where they're either the best and deserve to be talked about or not the best, which is stupid. It's dumb. We love this sport. Why can't we talk about all facets of it? The Boston Bruins are not the greatest regular season of all time, and that is okay because they very well may be the most impressive regular season team of all time. What they've had to do with a clear disadvantage, because you'll see from that graphic that we are one team in the salary cap era out of 20 on that list. No one else. So with a clear handicap, because we have to fit it all under the cap, we're right up there with the greatest teams of all time in the regular season. That's something to be so unbelievably proud of. And I bet those guys are very proud of it. Obviously, they keep talking about, well, the job's not done. The job's not done. But 
Every time you see someone, will the Habs, will Detroit, all that other stuff, what they had, the ties, overtime, it doesn't matter. This is something to be extremely proud of, and it's something that you at least get to put us in the conversation of one of the greatest teams of all time. Is that not, is that not enough? Yeah, we don't, 11 Hall of Famers on that 77 team. We don't have 11 Hall of Famers on this team, and that's okay. The league is massive now and his talent spread around it like crazy. And someone recently on Twitter pointed out, they said, well, how many of those wins are against the bottom feeders because this, people are tanking for Bedard? Let's be clear. There's only a handful of teams that truly hammered down their chances to get towards Bedard. And against current playoff teams, I believe when I looked into it, it was something along the lines of 31 wins and six regulation losses. And then a couple of overtime losses that's still insanely good because the other side of it is, I believe, like 32 wins and six regulation losses and a couple overtime losses. Those that the record being against non playoff teams. I just I, I can't express enough how asinine the arguments against people are when they're getting all excited about this season. But we know that how those of us who have researched the past and some of us are old enough to remember that team, not myself, obviously. I hope that was obvious to you. The 77 team was will never be surpassed, I don't think. I don't think it's possible because it was a different league where you didn't have to worry about fitting everyone under a cap and there was less like shuffling of the deck for it all. So I think that's okay to say, hey, in that world, at that time, yeah, I don't think you'll ever put a better hockey team out on the ice. But to build something like this with the handicaps put in place? Nah, no one can take that away. No one can take that away. We got it. 63 wins. I uh, I was at Banners. I know this is just kind of a rambling video, but I was at Banners watching that game. And after the game few drinks in me, walked out, stood next to the Bobby Orr statue, looked up a TD, and it was empty. There was no one else there. And I just got to look up in quiet, in the cool air. There's something special about it. Just felt right. Just felt right. I'm so insanely blessed that I got to see win 62 against the Devils. That was a fantastic game, as I've already talked about. But... Sitting in that bar, right outside of TD Garden, with other Bruins fans shouting at the screen. <laughs> That's something I will never forget. And there's no one that can take away how incredible this season has been. Never wants to put that little asterisk on it. Nah. No. But let's move on to something else a little bit. I got a couple things about this game that I wanted to point out. Firstly, Pasta. Hates the Flyers. He does. He scores hat tricks against them all the time. He freaking hates that team. And I love it. I don't know why he hates them, but I love it. Pasta, you've hit 60 goals. You and Phil Esposito are the only Bruins to ever hit 60 goals in a season. Take a bow. Don't play another fucking game. You're done, bud. You're done. Everybody we can sit, like, Pasta is way too important to this run. His season is over until game one of the playoffs. The Caps, and this goes for Bergeron, this goes for Krejci, this goes for McAvoy. Anybody we can sit, we sit. I know they're talking about Omar starting against the Caps on Tuesday night. Swayman will not get another start, I do not believe. Goalies, I kind of get it. You want to keep that rubber coming, keep them up to up to snuff, it is going to be a bit, it's going to be like a week between games, potentially. It's going to be, well, I guess we'll start this weekend, but there's going to be some time, and I know we don't love how we play after four days rest, typically, but you cannot risk an injury. You can't do it. It's time to park them. We've got the Caps, and we've got the Habs, and I don't trust either of those teams to not want to beat our skulls in to get a win. I just, you park everyone that you can. Everyone. 
We just tossed a handful of players back down to Providence. They'll get called right back up. I believe this is more cap shenanigans. There are cap limitations and call-up limitations that will prevent us from taking our entire lineup out. But the large majority of our best players can sit. I do not care about getting another win. I know people have talked about you need one more win to surpass the Habs' point, most points in a season. The, the reason that means even less to me is that 77 team did it in 80 games. So, like, the point percentage, they're still going to have the record for that. I don't, I don't know. That one just, it is what it is. Who cares? I, I, the, we, we, we keep moving the goalposts. Like, I also want this one. Like, I get it. Like, you want to take the Habs off of the freaking record books. And most of you are going to be upset about me saying that that 77 team was better than this 23 team. First of all, we got to win the cup to even have that conversation. And second of all, I would really, really, really like for you to go back and look at some of the statistics for that team. So look at the roster. Watch some highlights. Oh, man. That team was something else. Connor Carrick. Uh, got called up, a little pat on the butt for him. Good soldier down in the AHL this year. Uh, hugely different player than what we got. He was immensely disappointing earlier in uh, the preseason camp, I should say. I did not like his game. I thought he was getting caved. I didn't like what he was doing. He was finicky. He was just throwing the puck off his stick whenever it got there. Much more composed. That We call that growth. We love to see it. Obviously not a guy that I'm still like, hey, maybe this is a guy we see next year off of one game. But it kind of opened my eyes to something because he looked confident and, and wanted to perform and played pretty well other than almost killing Hathaway by hitting him in the back of the head with a slap shot. Yeah, Hathaway's okay. Or he came back to the game, so you got to assume he's okay. But so I'm watching Carrick and going, nice. And then I'm watching Zaborl. And Zaboral has made it so clear. And I was high on him going into the season. I really thought we were going to get something great out of him. He, if he is needed for the playoffs, God forbid, he will need to be heavily sheltered. He's just not, he's not consistent enough. His positioning is not good enough. His decision making is not quick enough. And he makes too many mistakes, like take your eye off the puck mistakes. Pucks go over a stick a lot. He gets out of position. I mean, Swayman got screwed by, by Clifton at one point, got screwed by Lindholm at one point, although he made the save on that one, got screwed by Zaboral twice. Like, <laughs> it was not a great night for a lot of our defensemen, but I'm going to pick on Zaboral a little bit here because he hasn't shown that he can stay up in the AHL, in the AHL, in the NHL consistently. I just, we have to shelter him if he is needed at all. He is not an option to start in the playoffs, which a lot of you guys already know. But you always kind of have that eyebrow raised. Like, all right, this guy has the toolkit, but can he put it all together? And he just hasn't yet, um, which is fine. It, it, it is what it is. We'll see what happens next year. All right, guys, it does it for me. I know this is super casual, weird video that isn't all that entertaining, but I just like talking to you guys and everything. So we're back to our regularly scheduled fun, hyperbolic, crazy bullshit on Tuesday. Uh, I just appreciate everybody and this season. Oh, now it's time to start hoping for that fairy tale, guys. What a fairy tale it would be. Go bees. Go bees!